Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to expand on an earlier video that I did to show how to create a message uh, app. And basically, up here, you see the, um, the first version of a app, and I'll, I'll put the link to the video uh, below in my comments. Uh, so this one right here, you basically, I've, I've got it pre-built out. So this person's name is Sue, and she has some threads going on. Basically, I click on this, and I can type in a message here, reply to the thread. So hello world, and then I again, I can click on it up oh, right there and say, um, how are you like that and I'll add another one so this is how I can go and add to the thread and then I hit a return so that's the original way and what I wanted to do is show a different way of, of creating a thread um, a messaging thread so in this one here um, I basically have a repeating group with another in, repeating group in it and I have some messages already so I'll just say hey Joe, like that, and it shows up right into the, the thread. So it's a different uh, user experience, and I'm going to walk through this uh, design in this video. So let's just jump right to it. One thing to note, I do keep the same data structure uh, for this. So I've got basically uh, message threads. Let me go to data types here. So I've got uh, message thread and message. So message is the, the message and it's just a simple uh, text here. And then I've got message thread. So message thread has a list of messages. Uh, so that way I have the list of messages that get created. Um, in the message thread. I have the thread name and in this I just use the user's first names for the, um, the thread name. And then I also have the list of users who are in the thread. So that's basically it for the, the structure. I manually created these uh, users. Um, I have another video that I will also link to show how to manually create uh, data, um, data structures here. Okay, and you can see I've already got some preloaded uh, messages in here. Let's get to the design though. So in this, I have a, uh, a group, and this is just to collect. Let me uh, show. Okay, so I have this group, and it's basically just to go and collect the, the input for this thread over here, um, which is different than this thread where I collect. I use this input to add uh, to this um, thread up here. I should note that both of these threads in this demo are the same. It's the same data set, uh, just a different presentation uh, based on how I've applied the repeating groups. So in this thread here, I've got my, repeat, my first repeating group, the outer repeating group, if you will. It's of type message thread because I want to see all of the message threads. And I just basically look at the message threads that have the current user within the message thread itself. Uh, I do have these sorted uh, by the creation date, and then the descending is, is yes. Uh, personal preference, however you want to set it up in your app, is, is perfectly fine. So this is how I set up the repeating group, the outer repeating group, if you will, that will show all of the different message threads. And then I have this internal um, or nested, if you will, repeating group. And this is of type message. And for this one, I basically have the current cells message thread. So basically, we have there's multiple cells. I've got two cells showing up, uh, or two rows, two cells, however you want to look at it for message thread. So for this repeating group here, I have current cells message thread, so this cells message thread, the messages in the thread, and then I've got those also sorted by created creation date here with descending order. Personal preference, again, however you want to sort it and present the information. Okay, I also on this one, just to kind of highlight it and, and, and distinguish it a little bit better, I, I put this uh, embedded or internal nested, if you will, uh, repeating group with this color here, just so you can see the, the internal 
repeating group, the nested repeating group, and the outer repeating group. So this outer one, again, is a message thread. This internal one is of type message. And that way, I can, I'm just going to go over here. That way you can see this is the message thread here. This one's called Joe. And then these are the messages within that thread. This message thread here is called Jack. And here are the messages in it. I also added in there who sent the message. So on this one here, Sue sent it. And I am of user Sue here in this page. And then I also have Jack. So Jack had also sent a, um, a message as well. And I simply over here, let me just go to Rich Text Editor. So I have current sales messages creation date and then current sales message creator's first name. So that's all I did in a simple text field right here. And then over here, I've got the current sales message, messages message text. So that's how we set it up. Now over here, what I have is, um, actually let me slide this over. I have this icon to do a reply. So here I have display data in message uh, group message thread. So group, oops, sorry, there we go, group message thread. Okay, so we're going to display the data of the current sales message thread. So we need to send the current sales message thread to the group. And then I'm going to show the group. In other videos, I've showed um, how custom uh, states can be used to show and hide things. In this one, I'm just using the, the show command. And let me just go over here for a moment. So it's element show. And then that group. So that's all we're doing in this, showing the group. Now, when the group is shown, I, I have a multi-input reply to thread. So the multi-input, let me just scroll over here, multi-line input. So that's all I'm using. That's this right here. And then a simple button. And the button has this workflow. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a message. So the message, it's a type message, message text is multi-line reply to threads value. So that's this field right here, reply to thread in its value. Next, make change to message thread. So we need to go and um, make changes to the message thread. So I'm simply adding the results of here, right there. And the next, we are going to hide the thread, hide the group, I should say. So this group, we're going to hide it. And then re reset the group message thread. So basically what that's going to do is when I type a message in here um, and then hit reply and it, say, it creates the message, it adds the message to the thread, then it's going to clear this input here. So the next time you uh, enter a message, it's going to be a blank field. So that's all that this reset group right here does. So that's it for that setup. Now one thing I want to go back back here for a moment because as I was testing this earlier, I did note that um, in my earlier design, when I did a create thread here, there was nothing to prevent um, creating a new thread with the same users. So instead of creating a new thread, so for instance, let me go over here for a moment, I have this thread with Joe. So if I click create a new thread here, um, the earlier logic, it would create a new thread and I'd see two entries in here with Joe or five entries or however many entries with Joe because it's creating a new thread every time. Well, that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is with Joe, if I've already got a thread with Joe, I want to go and just keep adding messages to that thread with Joe. So what I did was I fixed this workflow here. So I still have the create message, same as before. And then this right here, I used to have a create a new message thread here, but instead I've got make changes to message thread now. So this is new, I've added that, and I have this conditional in here now. So it's only going to 
um, do this, make changes to message thread. If I have the current the thread that has a current user, and then it contains the list, so the users contains a list of the multi dropdown send to list value. Okay, a lot of words there, right? So basically, what I have here is I have this multi dropdown, and I can add contacts in here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at all of the existing threads that already uh, I've already created. I'm doing a search for those, and I'm seeing if the users in there contains the list that's in the multi dropdown. If that's true, then I'm going to make changes to the thread. Okay, I'm going to add this uh, message, this new message, to the message thread. And then I'm um, simply this is no, no change here. I'm going to use this uh, state uh, for messages. Now this is new also. I'm going to terminate the workflow. Okay, so basically I have um, this make new make changes to the thread, and I'm going to terminate the workflow if the same condition is true. So I just did a copy and paste. So I did a right click, copy expression here, and then terminate it here. I just did a paste, paste expression. Okay, and the reason being is because I need to go, if, if the thread is indeed new, I actually need to create a new thread. But I've already made a change to the thread Okay, so if I made a change to the thread, if this expression is true and I, I made a change, I want to terminate the workflow. If it's, if it's not true, then I do need to go and create a new message, and that's what I do here. And this is the same exact step from the er earlier video where I add all of the uh, thread information and so forth. Okay, so, so basically at a high level, I create a message. I check to see if the message thread, if a message thread with those users already exists. If it does, then I make changes to that me uh, message thread. I add the message. And then I do this set state here, and then I terminate the workflow. If I don't terminate the workflow, I'm also going to create a new message. And I don't want to do that because I've already made changes to an existing thread. So if this is not true, I'm not going to make changes to a thread. And I'm going to not terminate the workflow. So I'm basically skipping this step two and step four, and then I'm going to go create a new message. So I hope that made sense. Um, it's a little bit complicated with the logic. Um, so hopefully that uh, will help you for making changes to a thread or creating a new thread. It's a pretty powerful ability to terminate the workflow. It can be a little confusing as well, though, for first time out. All right, so that's uh, basically all I did with this um, with this design. Um, now let's go back here, just do a refresh. So now over here, again, I can go and hello, Oops, spell it right. So there it is, return, hello, and then you'll also see that it is here as well. So this was with Joe. There's Joe. Okay, and it's from Sue. I didn't go back to the design up here and add who it was from, but I think you can see easy enough from here that it's uh, just whoever the creator of the, the message is. You just basically add it into the text field. Now I can go over here. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Go up here and hey, Jack. Now, in this design, I only show the latest uh, message. You have to click on it to get into the, to the thread. So it's a different design experience. In this one here, I just have the repeating group uh, embedded so you can see all the threads. Now, I'm going to go over to this screen here because I do have, so this person here, I've got him logged in as Jack. And I'm going to say, Hey, Sue, like that. So, hey, Sue, it's from Jack. Go over here. And, hey, Sue, from Jack. So, that's it. I just wanted to give an example of a different way of uh, look and feel, user experience uh, for creating messages. I hope this was uh, helpful. 
If you do like the video, I uh, appreciate any thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, please leave them uh, below. I do have upcoming videos. If you'd like to be notified of them, please subscribe to my channel and you will get those notifications.